Hey there folks, got another video for you. Pathfinder 2nd Edition Goodness. This time I'm taking a look at the Bestiary. This is the first Bestiary volume. I think there's a second one due out later this year or early next year. And of course, if you're going to be a Game Master in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you need this book. And I believe there's over 400 monsters uh, detailed in here. So you can see up here, over 400 of Fantasy's fiercest foes bursting from the pages. Mostly all your basic monsters like goblins, orcs, and oozes, and things like that. And some interesting new creatures as well. And I'll do a little flip through in a second here. This is about 360 pages. Uh, this alongside the Pathfinder Core Rules book amounts to about... 1,000 pages of gaming goodness. Imagine that, folks, just within two books. Uh, fantas fantastic uh, Wayne Reynolds artwork, as usual. Let's take a look at this. I just got this book uh, literally a couple hours ago, so I haven't had much time to look through it, but I thought I'd do a little flip through for you guys, a little explanation of what to expect. And of course, up here, you've got a listing, an alphabetical listing of all the monsters in here. Let's see, yeah, three pages worth of monsters, uh, listing anyway. You also have an appendix which covers the ability glossary. Some creatures have specific abilities. You can look them up in the glossary. Creature traits, same thing. Uh, monsters usually have traits associated with them, as many things do in the new Pathfinder 2nd Edition. New rituals, new languages, creatures organized by type and creatures organized by level. Always useful. Uh, especially that one organized by level. And as you'll see as you get into Pathfinder 2nd Edition, level is a very important uh, uh, thing in Pathfinder 2. Uh, everything from hazards, traps, monsters, uh, it's all categorized according to its level. And the difficulty uh, to use a skill against them might be based on their level. So level is an important feature of 2nd Edition. Uh, anyway, here is your listing and a little introduction, basically how to read the, the stat blocks as they're known for each creature, uh, a little bit about role-playing them, so on and so forth, and how to change them. Now, there's no rules in here on actually making and creating your own monsters. I believe the details of that, along with a lot of other things, are going to be listed in the GM's guide, the Game Mastering Guide which I believe the release date for is January next year. That's the earliest I remember. So you're going to find the rules for making your own monsters and such in that book. You don't find it in here, although they do give you some ideas on how to adjust creatures, uh, languages, gear, and so on and so forth. I think there's plenty of room to take your basic creatures here and adjust them. Uh, and they, like I said, they do give you some... Uh, advice on doing just that. So there is that. One other thing about this is there is no real NPCs. And when I say NPCs, I'm talking like uh, town guards and the local blacksmith and the typical normal NPC characters in the game. They're not listed in here. And typically they're not in Pathfinder. They usually also are listed in separate volumes, uh, like the NPC codex and stuff like that from the first edition. And also the Game Mastery Guide. So I believe that also has a lot of uh, NPCs that you can uh, grab and throw into your campaign uh, and create your own as well. Uh, and so on and so forth. Now I did hear that one way you can do your own NPCs, like Town Guards and such, is to basically reskin uh, some of these monsters in here. Like for instance, if you wanted bandits, you could basically just reskin the orc, which are included in here. If we get to the O section, and there's your goblins, goblin pyros. So basically, you could reskin your, for instance, it's just an example. You could take an orc and reskin him as a bandit leader or something, or a uh, orc war chief could be reskinned as a bandit uh, general or leader or whatever warlord. So that would be the easiest way to do this. Uh, just basically take the abilities and stats and just reskin it. And of course, as mentioned previously, there is a way to alter the the creatures in here as well, adjusting them. So I haven't really read this, but I imagine that's along the lines it goes. Elite 
adjustments, weak adjustments to make them weaker. Uh, so on and so forth. So there is that. So let's take a look at a couple here. Now, the way they're laid out is you got your basic background description at the top, sidebars of information. There is coding here. These little symbols mean something. Like that's a treasure uh, icon, location icon. Oh, the Goblin Song. I'm not sure what that icon represents, but that's interesting. So the sidebars, sidebars, which all the creatures have, have got some interesting tidbits about them. Usually each creature is listed on one or two pages, depending on how many subtypes of that creature there are, like goblins. We've got one, two pages worth of stuff. The Goblin Dog occupies a third page. Uh, and there's lots of types here. You have a basic description of goblins. Then it goes into the various subtypes of that creature. Like we have goblin warriors. And there's their stat block. Uh, goblin commandos. And again, their stat block. We have a goblin pyro. A little background. And a stat block. And finally a goblin war chanter. Probably your spellcaster. There he is right there. You've got your little description and you've got your stat block. Stat blocks, just looking at them right now, not bad at all. That's not an overwhelming amount of information, which is good because when you're playing on the fly, you know, you want to be able to find stuff quickly. Uh, if we look at the pyro here, there's the creature's name, there's its level, and what it is, this is a creature. Is that a subtype? A creature? Let me look real quick. They all say creature, so I guess that's what they all have. Hmm. Interesting. So it's a level one. And then you got your traits. These are got some color codes in here. I don't know what that means. I've only seen the dark red ones so far in the core rules. But there's a green one there. It says small. Got this one here kind of purpley. It says chaotic evil. That's their alignment. These are their traits. And then it goes into their perception, languages, skills, and their ability score modifiers. They're not stats. You won't you won't, you don't see the ability scores here anymore. They just give you the stats. Items, torch. I guess he just has a torch. And then it gets into the details of their armor class, their saves, hit points, uh, their ability, as I mentioned earlier in the appendix. You'll find abilities listed and defined there. This one has the goblin scuttle, which is a reaction, which is what that little arrow symbol is. And as goblin warrior, so come over to goblin warrior, we can see a description of the goblin scuttle. Interesting. Fun stuff. And then their speed, melee, and such spells as well that they can cast if it's a spellcaster. And so on and so forth. So there's the goblin. And I like the new layout. I like the new format. And most creatures have an illustration next to them, like the lich right here. Uh, I would imagine all the creature types, the main types, have at least a, one picture. And the norm... Nymphs, Rakshasa, <laughs> they're always fun, Rakshasa, an old classic monster, and of course sharks, I hate sharks, and your giant spiders, giant tarantulas, giant goliath spider, whoa, I won't show you all this because if you're a player you don't want to see this, but it does give you an idea what to look forward to if you've got this book coming Ah, zombies, all kinds of cool stuff. And here's the ability. Uh, glossary, again. A little description, what they are, how many actions they take, and so on and so forth. Creatures by type, and creatures by level, which is always useful. And as you can see, the creatures have that level, which again is very important in the Pathfinder 2nd Edition now. They don't really have experience point values or ratings anymore. They don't have challenge ratings either. Instead, they have levels, much like PCs have class levels. Well, that's interesting. So there it is, folks. And of course, your full-color promos of what's coming. Age of Ashes, Lost World Guide. That's, they also have a player's guide for the Lost Omens world, the name of their current setting, which is set in Galarian. Um, 
This is basically a reference to the time uh, the campaign is set in. Uh, Age of Ashes. That is an AP. First of which has been released. And of course your core rule book. So there it is, folks. There it is. I like it. And these two books, if you're going to be a GM, these are the essentials. You need to have these if you're going to uh, run some games. Throw in some uh, condition cards and a screen and maybe an initiative tracker, all of which I also have and I'll make videos for shortly. And you're all set. You're good to go. Loving this game, folks. This is my favorite role-playing game, period. Uh, definitely my favorite fantasy role-playing game. I'm having a lot of fun reading this. I like the new mechanics. I like the simplicity, the elegance of the system. Uh, a lot of depth, yet it's it's easy to learn and pick up, and it plays a lot faster. You can't beat that. So there you go, folks. That is the Pathfinder Bestiary, and I'll see you in the next video. So hang in there, folks. It's only going to get better. Take care.